morning guys how are we so we're getting the gym early it's quarter past six now let's go there she is ready to go so i'm in the yard now nice and early 20 past six monday morning the 4th of september i cannot believe can't be real quick we're going already like it's a fourth we at fourth day in september i mean christmas will is literally around the corner so plan for today is dale's already given my job uh, jobs today he's already sent me on job logic like I say we use this software on our phone which makes our life smart so the engineering company even our subcontractors use this what that means is basically is any jobs we get, Dale will deploy them to us engineers. Once we've completed the jobs, we will return the job ticket back to Dale. Then Dale then can invoice. So nine times out of ten, each the, the day that's been complete, Dale's at the worst a day behind. So like today, last still Friday's invoicing. But cash is king. You have to keep cash flow going inside the business. But that is what it is. Like say, we all know that. Otherwise, it's going to fail in it. So. I'm joined up this morning and I'm going to pop to a fuel site, so it shouldn't be a bad day. I need to get all this pipe work organised that we got delivered last week, get rid of that kitchen, just get the office in a little bit of law and order. But yeah, should be a decent day. I'm going to get in the gym now for a quick 45 minutes. I need to. I've had three or four weeks off being on holiday and stuff, I'll be honest. It just takes its uh, toll. Too, uh, too much Greek food around the pool, but it was nice, like I say. So we'll get in them gym and try to get a bit of chest in now. Uh, it's just good that we convert this little space because in here before just a little toilet in here which was down what's fucking with that? down there but you see we'll put that in now and then obviously behind us we opened it up to put the full shower in there so for the lads and myself once you've trained there you can get a shower and we're straight off to work so it really creates no excuses to get it done I have one coffee, milk and sugar and... Flat white? Uh, flat white as well, please, mate. Some... Yeah, milk and sugar in that one. Yeah, please, yeah, thank you. Yeah, please. All right, smashing in a sec. So the job we're at now looks like it's going to be a decent one. This is a quote, in it, Dale? Yeah. There are the gates, the entrance, and the guy's rang us now saying he's got a tea room. What's he doing for us? I'm on the coffee or on the flat white. Boom, let's go. Right, so they are 54 mil. What we're proposing to do there, the 54 mil there, we're going to tee off this section here. And what we're going to do, isolate that, kill that full system. Oil boiler can be stood situated here. May need to put a little basin, but client can sort of discuss that with them. Flo's going to propose to go out that wall there. So he'd be looking at one elbow, two elbow. That takes me outside. We just need to speak to our electricians in relation to connecting to these blending zones. So there's one, two, three, four zones. One additional. Should be able to connect back to the transformer circuits there just to work with the four halves you're going to need, aren't you? That connect to the phone. Yeah, so four half circuits as well. So pretty simple. It'll be a case of teeing off 54 mil there. Literally run it along. One boil there. Also allow provisions for... Uh, a secondary boiler if it is needed, but I don't think it wants it, but just in case. The only issue we're going to have down here is condensate pump. So we need Right, so flowing for this one, I need to check obviously the regs and stuff and see what's what. That window's on... This is just for the quote, this one there, just to make sure. Uh, this So that one there is not open. I need to look at that. We need to get that done. One full will come through. Air intake, cage, bang, up, done. So you need to accommodate for that. The oil line also is maybe approximately... You're going to want a 10 meter, 25 meter coil of 10 mil, say, sleeved. We'll come off the tank. The client's going to wheel you the horse, fan. All right, I'm Frankie, yeah, new apprentice. Learn how to fix a flush pipe or something. I like it, that's yeah. well done, mate. Right, so, mate, what we're going to do is work on the live toilet. So, first things first, take your system lid off. We could look, basically, with this. Yes. Isolating the water, but I don't think we need to, we don't warrant it because it's a siphonic siphon. So if we move this like that, it isn't going to leak. First things first, what we need to do, bud, if you get down your knees here, bud, so you're going to firstly disconnect your overflow, you're going to undo that nut and you're going to undo that nut. So lefty loosey, righty tight here, yeah? yeah. so that's right. It's always good just to take a little bit of time to invest in new apprentices, isn't it? We've got time on this job, we've got an hour, and I think we'll do it a lot quicker, so it's nice just to let you have a go and try, like say. So, to disconnect that, what I'd do is I'd push it down that way. So far, yeah, then pull it out, that's good. Yeah. What you're going to do next is you're going to disconnect your flush pipe. So you're going to undo 
you topping up there. Well done, Matt. You will get a little bit of water that'll come out of you in a bit, but don't worry about it, I've got some blue roll. So we'll get a little bit of blue roll. Just take a little bit of that off and pop it on the floor. Put the weight back at the ready as well, but I don't think we're gonna need it. So once you've done that, with your blue roll, because you're going to get inevitably mate, a bit of water on the floor. Yeah. So just pop that on the floor underneath there, bud. So when you look at that, how would you think that connects in? So that was in what we call the compression fit, which basically winds in and winds out. What type of fitting would you think that is when you look at it? What, what, how do you think that connects? Because it's going to connect to there. Do you think you push it in? It's like a push fit fitting or a compression way to tighten it up? Uh, probably push fit. Well done, because obviously it's got little lugs yeah. on. So now we've disconnected this, what you can do, is if you look at your flush pipe at the back, what I'd be doing there, mate, is I'd be getting your pipe and pushing it back against the wall. That's it. Pull it down, good to go. Now, if you look at your, keep that, it's going to use that. Yeah. So look at your flush pipe. So this is the code that you're going to replace. So can you see the difference in your codes? Yeah. So whip that cone off. So now just have a look at that and understand why it's leaking. If you look at the teeth on this one opposed to this one, over time, that's just worn loose and it's yeah. just basically dialed and it's bum like I say, it's the original ideal standard. That'll have been in from day dot that. These new ones are a lot better. When you ever change these, what you need to do, pal, is in the back of the toilet hole there, you just need to get some blue rolls to get that blue roll off the floor. Just give it a little clean inside the hole, yeah? Well done, mate. And then what I'd be pushed to do next is get your new push, your new, uh, Yep. Push code, insert that into the hole. That way? Yeah, that's right, well done. Yeah. So it's nice and square. Well done, that's perfect, mate, well done. So once you've done that, now what you need to do, because when you look at this, this works like that. What I'd be inclined to do is pull that down just a little bit, like that. I'd be putting it into there first, like that. Then there, as you can see what I'm gonna do, is I'd literally get it to a position like that, get it in and then get it in. You see how I've got that like nice and smooth? Yeah. Simple as that. But what I'm gonna do is let you do all the full tasks because you're never gonna learn if you don't have a go at yourself, mate. So it's Frankie's first day. He, he, what, he, it's his first proper day on the books with the company when he started his apprenticeship. 16, you pay for KR, don't you? Yeah, mate. Signing a contract tonight as well because he, uh, he's a good little rugby player. So he's gonna batter George. Look at the size of his little arms though. A little triceps, got decent arms, haven't you? Yeah. Is that? So that's good. So are you happy with how we've got it into there? Probably not really. I don't know. No, that's good because if you look at the line there, where it was, do you see there? Yeah. That's where your old fitting was onto there. Yeah. So one second. So if you look at the line where that is, that's where your old one laid in relation to that. So you're not yeah. going to be far off. So I am happy with that. There, what you can do is you should most probably just get away with putting it up like that. But what I'd do, wait there, mate. What I would do, and I always do just a piece of thingy because this Laco slip tight, you can either PTF it or do that. I'd get some of that brush and just, just dry this area like that. Just brush some of the paste around there where the plastic meets the thread all the way around it, because then when you come to tighten it up, you can clean it up. Now, I've seen people wear the mask come before, but I don't agree with that's it, that's good. Because once you tighten that fitting up, it'll compress the paste into the fitting and it shouldn't leak, mate, once you flush it. Yeah, yeah. So you can see what we've done here, basically. We've taken that it apart, right. that's perfect. Yeah. Have you got right on the back there as well, yeah? Yeah, yeah? yeah, yeah. So we've taken it all apart. Once you've taken it apart, you just basically put it back together. So you'll come to understand that when you take things apart, don't forget how to take it apart because you need to put it back together. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to let you continue. Another big thing as well, cross-threading. So when you're putting a thread onto your pipe, you always need to make sure that when you're doing it, when you turn it the right way, because you're loosening there, you need to turn it uh, lefty loosey, righty tighty. Yeah. So you're, gonna, you're tightening that up now, that's it, and that is going on nice and easy. There will be times when you come to tighten the fittings up though, bud and you'll be like, that ain't going on. You need to stop, look at it, because if your thread's going on an angle, it isn't going on. Yeah, so yeah. once you've got that to a stage where you're happy, you know what So we call them siphon pliers. So you can extend them up like that, literally, and get it and grip them like that. Again, that is plastic. So just give them a little nip. You don't want to over tighten it, because you'll snap the fitting. So you'll put them on, just get a feel for the tightness. It's nice and slow, not ragging it. You want to be nice. You can make them a bit small if you need it, or is that right? Just another quarter of a turn, you should be good with that. 
that all perfect, mate. Right, that's good. So, do you think we're good to test this now? Well, well done. You picked it up, so you need to carry on putting it back together. Yeah. That's right, mate. You've done the right thing there. Because I thought it was going to be like, yeah, you could, because you've got an open end there. So, you need to start putting it all back together. So, that one goes on to there. So, you can put that on there now, yeah? Just loosely. So, what I'd do is take that over there. Make your life easier. Take that out, put that on there already. Yeah. Put that onto there now, like that. So that wants to make sure there. I want to get it so, because it looks like. There you go, that's on. And you're going to get that onto there. So you want to get your nut onto there and get that onto there as well, yeah? Other way, mate. That way. The other way. You've got to think how's your thread going to tighten up if you do it that way? Yeah, yeah. Then you're going to get that into that fitting. A bit tedious. That's it, mate. That's, that's it, and so tighten that one up first because that's your governing one to know to make sure you've got the falling and stuff as well because yeah. it's just an internal overflow. I don't think it needs it now because the siphon has actually got a built-in overflow, but it's there, so we'll just connect it back up. Well done, mate. That's going well. Right, where's that blue roll gone? Take a bit of blue off, mate. Yeah. Bit more, mate. It is expensive, but always take a bit more. That'll be enough. Right, what you need to do, dry up every fitting now that you've just touched. So all the joints you've just done, make sure it's all dry. Because when you flush it now, what you're looking for is water. If you leave that wet and then test it, it's still going to be wet, so you won't know where leaks coming from. So you need to dry everything up, make sure everything's dry, so when you come to the flush, it's good to go. Go in for your apprentices, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Then your last connection is just going to be the bottom of the toilet, and it would well done. Yeah. All good. Yeah, good to go. If you want to test it, mate, feel free to test it. So you're always going to do a field test, no matter what you do. So once you've done that, you're literally just going to feel underneath there. Absolutely bone dry. Absolutely bone dry. Bone dry. Bone dry. Now we will get a few comments and that and people like why we put paste on there. It's each engineer's discretion to their own. It shows you it's that don't do it in a yeah, nutshell. Yeah. Things when you're doing stuff where you've got a water flow, you always want to put in additional bits on to seal it. Because there's nothing worse when you put a toilet together and stuff, you utilise the old washer and then it leaks, you've got to strip it all apart again. So always think ahead and be like, how can I make my life easier? Yeah. What do you want to say to the fans, Frankie? Yeah. First day, what you done? This. Well done, mate. So we're here today, we've got a boiler installation that was site surveying. Problem is, there's a bit of a flu issue. Um, so we're looking to replace the flu, put a new control panel in, um, and ultimately get them up and running. What are you saying, Frankie? No, and that's what we do at Caprani, don't we, Dale? We make sure that we do the quotes and quote them right. But look how lovely this building is, isn't it? So okay. what do you reckon this has been like an old? Maybe like, maybe like a, no, like probably get like a big manor house and then they split it up into different sections and done it as an HMO. So you'll be going. <laughs> it's cool though, isn't it? It's really smart, mate. Oh, what I don't get with the deal, do you reckon that company that would quote it for on this full building or could it be like, what I can't understand with buildings like this is, would you have it where you'd maybe have like, We'd have worked full to this other company, you could have like five estate agents own these, or would one person own it, and then... Well, we don't, the estate agents will never own it, but we'll manage it. Right, get you. There'll be a number of different landlords that will own different sections of the building, different rooms, get you. and then different estate agents will manage them associated rooms. Ah, like it. So I've just got out of there now, we've just literally looked at the boiler, the boiler's in the bathroom, the issue with the boiler is, a couple of things, it's a sunny in the van, so being too special, absolute rubbish. It literally does one bathroom and about three radiators, so what we need to look to do with that, uh, oh, Dale said a good thing as well while we're here. Dale, what did he say? Free it up. Business cards, because it's a quick, obviously, promoting the business as we do. I don't even know if I've got out in the van. I know. They might be in the side, but I don't know if I have you know, Dale. I think I put them all in the office. Basically, the flow is up there on that, and you can see how high the building is. So what we're going to have to do is look to get up there, but we'll go for uh, internal void space in the property. We're just going to look at putting an Ardy Logic 24 kilowatt boiler in and they're good to go. We've got an ECB in the flat that we can test it from. We don't need to test it from anywhere else. So. Bad for me that. Do you know what? It is a clean event out the other day, mate. Sorry, pal. Standards. I know, bad. But, be a nice job to get. You can see they've got that 
and then they've got that full thing over there you know Dale. over there and that looks like it's a plant one and that's one we want to get into right so it is now 10 to 3 we're back at the office me and dale say hi sports fans hi sports fans we are literally now just in the office catching up on a little bit of paperwork uh, we've been inside the lodge being back to office had some dinner they just popped up to a couple of jobs now me and Dale have got to pop to a quick meeting next door for 10 minutes just to look at a potential new boiler that way. So hopefully we'll win the job. And then from there, we've got to go to a decent job in it. We obviously can't give too much information, but could lean on to some quite big things, which is good. But this is what I like to do, and this is why it always works having someone like Dale in the business. You know, he keeps the wheel out of the sun. He keeps the wheels inevitably moving, but he also allows me the freedom to be able to, especially from all commercial, to be able to come back and have an hour for midday or whatever just to be able to keep on top of the job. Because if I don't, it ends up that like everyone goes on the half four, then I'm back in here later on and it's not on, that I'm back here sat on my own, drowning it, you know what I mean? So we'll team out, we'll do. Yeah, yeah. Let's 